All right, let's get some insight into the Indiana Hoosiers. Been plucky of late. Uh, I get a huge win at Wisconsin. Matthew Weaver covers Indiana football for pigs.com, part of 24-7 Sports with the great site at Indiana. Matt, how would you kind of describe the season so far for Indiana? Well, it's been it's been a struggle. I mean, uh, you know, they uh, expectations were. I mean, it's when when you have the schedule they have, you know, the expectations are tempered so much, somewhat because you know you're basically starting the season with three losses with Michigan, Ohio State, and and Penn State. Um, but I think people were expecting. You know, they had two wins two years ago, four wins last year. You you were kind of maybe hoping or thinking that they would improve a little bit on that and, and maybe get back to that you know, six win bowl uh, season type of year. Um, and, you know, last week helped, but obviously they're on their backs are against the wall. They got to win out, um, you know, to make it. Their offense was a major issue, hence the the firing of Walt Bell uh, about a month ago um, and replaced with former Northern Illinois and Temple head coach Rod Carey, former IU player. Um, and there's been some signs of life from the offense. Uh, Brendan Soresby settled in a little bit at quarterback after a quarterback battle that went like, five weeks into the season, I think five, six weeks, if not more into the season. So um, defensively they've been, they've been, there's been flashes of good play. um, But there's also, if you look at the stats, there's been some tough play now, like I've said in our questions, they have played, you know, some of the best offenses, not only in the big 10, but in the country, but the bottom line is they haven't played great. Um, Actually one of their best defensive performances was probably against Ohio state at week one. Now, you know, it was a long time ago, but, um, you know, they, they've had, I mean, Michigan just killed them. Maryland, um, I know you guys played, went over there and won. They they chewed them up. I mean, it was a really bad performance. They, they have played better the last two weeks. They were they were actually pretty good at Penn State. Some of the points they gave up were on mistakes from special teams and, and Soresby throwing a bad pick. Um, uh, it's very solid last week against Wisconsin. Wisconsin's obviously banged up a little bit, but they're playing better. I mean, it's a team that I told, you know, I, I they have enough talent to win six games, but they, they couldn't they couldn't have self-inflicted wounds. And this has really been a season of self-inflicted wounds for Indiana. Hard to talk about Indiana without talking about what is the long term here, right? I mean, Tom Allen, 2019-2020 with Michael Penix, A.J. Barner, two guys who are playing pretty well at their new spots. Like, they've had, they had two really good seasons in a row. It's like, oh, Tom Allen – I figure that thing out at Indiana as, as much as you can at Indiana, uh, kind of like Illinois here, right? But three and twenty-one in the Big Ten since then, um, Matt. So, what what is the temperature around uh, Tom Allen right now? Well, I mean, it's 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 rising. I mean, if you look at some of the the national stuff, and even the guys that you know, I know Brandon Marcello who does the uh, he gets him who does the um, the coaching thing, the hot seat. You know, he's up there at the top and. And, you know, like you said, it's not been good. Um, they, they've, they've, you know, they've got seven wins, I think, in the last, uh, yeah, last uh, uh, few years or 10 wins. And, and most of them are against, you know, non-FBS teams. Um, two of them are against Idaho. You know, you're, you're, not, you're not exactly, uh, you know, uh, beating quality teams. So the problem is for Indiana, his buyout's $20 million on December 1st. So his contract, the way it works is his contract goes until the end of November, then it restarts the next year on December 1st. So December 1st, his buyout drops. Right now it's $25 million. It'll drop to roughly $20 million. So that's a big problem. I mean, Indiana's not the type of school that, it, you know, not many schools have that kind of cash laying around, but even if Indiana did, they're just not the type to spend that on football. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens these last three games. You know, I, I've asked myself, what happens if they win five? It's an improvement over last year, um, you know. And obviously, this week, I, to me, of the, when they going into the Wisconsin game, to me, this was going to be the toughest game at Illinois. I thought of the remaining four games that they had to win. I thought this was going to be the toughest game. Um, Michigan State's down, and obviously, Purdue is really struggling too. But it's a rivalry game, and it's at West Lafayette, so that does make it a little bit tougher. But um, I just I don't know. It's so hard to say. You know, if they if they would say they'd lose out, I think Indiana would probably like to make a change. That's just my gut feeling, just because it looks like it's really flat line. But can you make a change? Is is the is the money there? Um, and if it's not, can you maybe get him to agree to a lower buyout to part ways? Because you know, if it goes it if it goes three and nine, then you're probably looking at he's he's a dead man walking next season if you bring him back. What is what is realistic? Like if Indiana did go out there in the market. Um, who can it appeal to? Because uh, like, like Illinois, right? It's there's just not a, a great history there. No, I do think the one thing that helps uh, schools that we cover in the Big Ten 
is that media money. Yeah. And that's huge. I mean, what is it, seventy to be seventy million dollars, or is it this year or next year they start getting seventy million dollars per school? That's huge. Um, you know, and and that's something that you know, obviously they you're not using that for NIL because schools can't pay, but you know, it gives you resources that you wouldn't get at some other schools. Who would it appeal to? I mean, you know, you're to get a city power five head coach, they probably have to overpay. I yeah. mean, let's be honest. Um, you know, at least a successful one, a guy who's been winning. Um, but to me, they need to find, I've told people, I mean, it's easier said than that. They need to find their Lance Leipold. If they do make a change, they need to find that guy. Is that guy out there? I don't know. And if he is, can you get him? I don't know. Uh, but that's what they need to find. He doesn't have to be a sexy hire. You just need a guy who's who's shown an ability. I would look at a guy who's been going to places where they've been losing and they immediately start winning. And he's shown an ability to build programs. I mean, those guys aren't easy to find, but that's what I would look for. Um, you know, I, I can see them going. I think you need a head coach. I wouldn't go the coordinator route, but coordinators are typically a little bit cheaper than going after, obviously, after a head coach. So maybe that's it. And that's the other thing. If they pay that $20 million, obviously, it's not a lump sum. It's over a period of years. Um, but then you still got to pay amount of money to bring in a coach and a new staff and, and all that kind of stuff. So it adds up quick. Um, I think it's probably more appealing than people would think because it's in the Big Ten. But still, there are there are like you know there are obstacles um, like you 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 guys have in Illinois. Probably not as many as um, you guys probably have as many as Indiana does. But there still are obstacles there that uh, are going to be tough to overcome. You've heard us talk about home field apparel since the start of the season. There are a lot of collegiate apparel brands out there, but we wanted to partner with Home Field because their designs are the best out there. Some of Illini Enquirer's favorites are the Basketball Ringer Tee, the Rose Tee, and the 1980s Long Sleeve with the script Illini. It's great. Be sure to check out homefieldapparel.com, filter by Illinois, and see what we're talking about. And our listeners get an exclusive deal using code Illini23. Using that code Illini23 gets you 15 percent off your first order we all know you're wearing a line ag gear so if you're in need of a refresh we really think that you should check out home field apparel which has the best designs and these shirts guys are really comfortable their designs are super unique and a lot of thought goes into each concept there's really nothing else on the market like what home field is doing you can find them at homefieldapparel.com and use code align 23 for 15 percent off your first order at homefieldapparel.com well I think they're playing some of their best football, Matt, right? Like the last couple of games, kind of like Illinois. I think the last three games, they've played their best ball. You know, watching the last three games, I thought Penn State, they had chances to win that game. Uh, and then obviously last week beat Wisconsin. Uh, I know Braylon Allen wasn't there, but that's still a really good win for them. So what has led to that? Well, I think, I mean, I think you're starting to get some consistent play at quarterback. So as we played well at Penn State. Um, he really did the, the defense, which, you know, early on, I thought the defense was going to be somewhat of a strength, maybe not great, but, you know, a, good enough to maybe kind of keep them in some games. Um, they played better, um, you know, uh, at, at Penn State. I mean, they, they gave up seven points on a muff on at their own 10 yard line or what a 15 yard line, whatever it was. As far as we had a pick right before half that they turned into three points, you know, a little disappointing with the play calling when you get a pick and it's um, you're down three. With five minutes to go, and you've got Penn State on the ropes. You know you run it three straight times to kick a field goal. To me, when you're two and five, I'm chucking first pass was going into the end zone. I mean that's me, but um, you know that I just think I think Soar's be playing better. I think they're you know if you look at the running stats, they haven't been great the last couple of weeks, and you can't take out the sack yardage because they're part of the rushing stats. But if you just look at the rushing stats, they've actually been pretty solid. I think there was like 120 yards against Penn State, similar against Wisconsin, two teams that are usually pretty good against the run. And when you can run the ball, I mean, you, you guys know it over there. I mean, Bielema builds his offense on being able to run the ball, and then you do everything off of that. And if you can run the ball just a little bit, you don't have to be going for six, seven yards a pop or 200 yards a game, enough that they have to respect it. Then that opens up stuff in the passing game. And Soresby th throwing the ball better. And then Adam McNally, McCauley, excuse me, has played much better. Um, and some of the other receivers, you know, have played better. They lost Cam Camper, though, this week for the season, rest of the season which is a loss. Omar Cooper went down uh, last week. Don't know his status, which could be a big deal, but they've got some skill guys that they can protect Soresby and they can run the ball and take care of it. Soresby's a tough kid. Um, he's, he's got, I know the question about him was throwing the ball, but he's got an arm too. Like uh, what have you made of him? Is he a long-term answer for them? I think so. And I'll be perfectly honest. I, I'll, I'll eat crow. A month ago, I thought, you know, I'm not sure this guy is a, is a big 10 quarterback. Um, but in a lot of it was because of his passing. And if you watch his highlights from high school, he did a lot of running. Um, I think he played, I, I, you know, he wasn't highly recruited 
And I know there's always excuses for that. I think one of them is I think he played baseball. Uh, he did play baseball. I'm wondering if that kind of he maybe didn't go to all those camps and stuff. Um, but uh, he's 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 six three, two thirty, big guy. He can run. I wouldn't call him dynamic, but he can run enough that you got to respect it. Um, and then his his he's got a good arm. The biggest thing for him is just his accuracy can be off. And now a lot of it's mechanically drops his elbow sometimes, doesn't get his feet set, stuff like that. But when he gets in a rhythm, he can really make some nice throws. And his ability, you know, everybody's talking about Taven Jackson, obviously Trace's younger brother, four star, big time recruit. The problem with Taven is he's not he's not uh, he's a pocket guy. And I'm not saying he's Michael Penix in any way whatsoever because Michael Penix right now is on a different planet than a lot of guys. But he's like Michael Penix in that he wants to stay in the pocket. Michael could run, but he didn't want to run. He wanted to stay in the pocket and throw the ball. That's what Taven wants to do. He can run a little bit, but his strength is being in the pocket. They tried doing the read option. They tried doing triple option. He looked really uncomfortable. Um, And I told people, I think you need to run a, a more dual threat quarterback because this team can't run well enough just by running the ball. You got to have the quarterback as a running element. And I think that Sorsby's opened up some things. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest thing. I will say this, um, this team has a quit on Tom Allen. They were, they, they got smoked, uh, what Maryland, Michigan Rutgers, three games in a row. Um, and they didn't quit. They went out to Penn State. I thought that was going to be a 35. I thought that was going to be it. And they didn't quit. Um, obviously they didn't win, but they played well. Then they came back and beat Wisconsin and we'll see what happens these last three weeks, but I'll give them that. You know, I thought these guys would mail it in after those three games. What, okay. You, you brought the name up. What, what do Indiana fans, what does Indiana people think of Michael Penix and Kalen DeBoer doing what they're doing out in Seattle? Well, I think you're happy. Obviously for you're, you're happy. I'll say personally, cause obviously I got to know both of them. I still, I still talk to coach DeBoer, you know, now and again, I'm thrilled for both of them. I mean, it's weird to say this. Michael Penix needed to leave Indiana. It just what you know what I mean. Like he 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 was obviously phenomenal, and but he needed to live in leave Indiana because as long as he was here, he was always going to be the starter or the presumed starter, and they were just they weren't protecting him. And I mean, and really, his injuries weren't so much because of not protection, the lack of protection, but I think it led to some of the stuff. You know, if you watch him out there, he doesn't really run that much. He stays in the pocket and just drops dimes and throws for 400 yards a game. Um, so personally, I, I, I'm pleased. I think for a lot of people, um, you know, it's, it's tough to watch, you know, another media guy said we were driving back from, I think it was Michigan. And he said, he said, you know, the, the Michael Penix, Indiana breakup is one of those ones where you break up with a girl and, and, um, it's a good breakup. Like you're, you're, you're still friends, but you don't want them to do better than you. Well, he's like, well, unfortunately, Michael Penix has moved on to a supermodel. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we, ha- and you have it. So, but you're still happy for him because he's, a, he's a good dude. He worked hard. He really took a beating that last year, um, really all the years in the end. But that 21 season was rough on Michael. I mean, he, I think to the point where he was thinking about walking away and look at him now. He might win the Heisman and be a first round pick. Uh, defensively, what, what do you think of this Indiana team? What are their strengths and weaknesses on that side of the ball going up against an Illinois offense that has played a little bit better, especially with Caden Fagan at running back? Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, I think up front that, and I, the rushing stats are going to say this, but I think their strengths in their front seven. Aaron Casey's phenomenal. Um, I think he's having an all Big Ten season. He was Big Ten Player of the Week. He's up, you know, in the top in a lot of categories. He's been really good. Um, uh, secondary has been up and down. Um, you know, they they that was always a question coming in. They were better early in the season, and then, I mean, Maryland they were awful. A lot of games they were awful. Michigan they were awful. They just they weren't good. Um, but I think I would say the strengths are the front seven. Andre Carter, the transfer from Western Michigan, has been a good addition. Some other guys they brought in have been good additions. Um, you know, to me, the biggest thing is, is I know it's cliche and everybody says it. They're, they're going to have to slow down Illinois' running game. Whoever the quarterback is, put him in second and long, third and long, and, and see if you can maybe get them into some mistakes and, um, you know, win the turnover margin. I mean, you've got to – when you play a team like Illinois, you got to slow down the run game because if not, Bielema was just going to, you know, he's going to run it all day long, and I, and, and I don't blame him. I would too. Um, you know, if if their quarterback gets protection, you know, the guy that worries me, always the running back is Williams, um, the receiver. He's good. Um, you know, and if they have protect, if they protect that guy and he's got all day to throw, he's going to get open. And so that to me, I think that's the guy I'd be worried about if I was Indiana. Um, so, you know, like I said, you got to get some pressure, stop the run, and then hopefully make get maybe force some mistakes. You kind of made a reference to this, but uh, this is a big game for Illinois for their bull hopes. What's this game mean for Indiana? Well, it's do or die. They're, I mean, Coach Allen said it, they're in playoff mode every week now. 
you know, and, um, you know, I don't want to put the, the, the cart before the horse, but, you know, to me, I think if they win this game, they've got a great shot at going bowling. I mean, Michigan State, they got them at home. And then obviously at Purdue will be tough. That won't be easy, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with Purdue because it's a new coaching staff there. They're not bowl eligible. Can they keep that team together? A bunch of guys they didn't recruit. You know, we'll see. Um, but, you know, it's, it's huge. I mean, obviously, if you lose this game, then essentially your season's over. I mean, you still got – they still got two trophy games with Michigan State and Purdue to play for. Um, so there's still pride. But as far as going bowling, that's what this team's been holding on to this through this whole losing streak is we still have a chance to go bowling. If you lose that, it'll be interesting to see how they come out and play the last two weeks. Should get uh, two very motivated teams. And I'm telling Illinois fans, this is not an easy game with what I've seen from Indiana the last couple of weeks. Matt Weaver, uh, thanks for the time as always, man. Appreciate the insight. Enjoy the game Saturday. Thanks, man. This episode of the Illini Enquirer podcast is presented by Underdog Sports. We see a lot of you are downloading Underdog Sports, using the promo code, and having fun, which we love to see. If you haven't already checked out Underdog Sports, be sure to do so. It's super easy to use. You go on the app, go pick whether favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total than what is listed. For example, Travis Kelsey, he's very popular these days. If his number is set at 50 receiving yards, and you know Taylor Swift is in the house, you may feel confident he's going to go way higher than the number. Do that with two to five different players and you're in business if you go five for five you can 20x your money so sign up today with promo code Illini and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and don't forget to register with promo code Illini to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 there are a lot of fantasy companies out there but we decided to partner with underdog because it's the easiest place to play fantasy sports it's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry you must be 18 or older and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply concerned with your play call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org